Marie Peterson surprises Officer Christy Monroe with a bouquet of flowers. We just wanted it. I <laughs> to thank her in person. The day after, she says Officer Monroe helped deliver her great granddaughter inside their family car Tuesday morning. Your character is above and beyond. Yo, I you were truly our angel on earth. Surveillance video captured the family pulling into a parking lot. Officer Monroe just so happened to be behind the building. I was doing a traffic stop and um, a young lady stopped me and let me know that a young lady was having a baby in the back seat of her vehicle. Officer Monroe rushed to help. Peterson, who has a medical background, asked if the officer had ever delivered a baby. The answer was no. <laughs> I've never delivered a baby. I've never had a baby. So I just wanted to be calm and do whatever it is that I could to assist. Several minutes later, after rescue arrived, Peterson's granddaughter, Tynesha Guider, gave birth to a healthy baby girl. What was that experience like for you? Oh, man, I, I can't describe it. I just say that it was a... Uh, that experience pretty much changed me. Uh, I love it. The family has now asked Officer Monroe to be the baby's godmother, a role she accepted without hesitation. I don't have a whole bunch of family here, but I just realized I made new family members and I, I love it. Officer Monroe believes she was meant to be in that parking lot for a reason, and she is grateful for the new family she made. <laughs>
have seen that there's a real value and a desire for families to participate. While kids are home, they can enjoy a 10 minute live chat with one of the puppets like Astrid, who tells us what quarantine has been like for her. We've been playing games and studying at home. And you know what? I also make my own videos. <laughs> I made a video to teach people how to properly do Zoom. And when she's feeling sad. I draw pictures and I listen to music and sometimes I put really great music on and I just do a little dance party and that's how I feel better. But it's not just about entertainment. Tracy tells us it's more about empowering and educating kids about child abuse, domestic violence, and bullying. They can talk about things that they might not talk about with a real person. They can share their feelings. They can ask questions that might feel uncomfortable asking an adult. She says engaging with kids who have special needs is also a priority. What this puppet chat experience has done is amazing. Lenore has a nine-year-old daughter with autism. She says Charlie has been interacting more since signing up for the puppet chats. She is friendlier now. Actually, her shadowing for her school, which I wanted to get her into, she would not have been able to do the Zoom meeting to interview for the school that she needs to be in if it weren't for the puppet chat. <laughs> It's just been really important to us from the get-go to be involved in Ypsilanti, getting nutritious spread out to everybody, making it available to everybody. Jennifer Hagland and Mark Bogard are Bird Dog Baking, a small business with big plans. We did a smart thing by starting really small, especially given the kind of circumstances now. So many businesses are in trouble with, you know, paying rent and overhead and all of that. It's really scary. The breads they bake are as much art as food. They're part of a collaboration that brings together local farmers, distributors, and bakers. They donate some of their breads to emergency food programs. They hope that paying customers see that everybody wins. You're supporting your local businesses. You're also keeping your local bakeries in business, um, your local farmers in business, your local millers in business, and it is a much higher quality. It's way more flavorful, and you're keeping all of that strength in your community. Jennifer says right now, everybody is looking for healthy alternatives. We're really lucky actually to have started now because people are back in love with bread and they love wheat and they love eating bread and baking bread and they're really interested in it. But to put so much work into products like this, she must love cooking. I cooked for a really long time and I hate cooking, but baking somehow it just really stuck to me. And it's so rewarding working with your hands and trying to do what we can to help. And it does make you feel like you have a little bit of a part in doing something good. It was a moment so big, you couldn't contain the excitement. It's history! Because after days and days of waiting, best, best view, I mean, amazing. The thirst for answers quenched. It's to see it finally after the, you know, the three days now, it's just their third time to charm and it's just unreal. SpaceX's serial number five prototype making its highly anticipated 150 meter hop, towering over the hands that made it in Boca Chica. Some doubted this could fly at all, but the start of this successful test showed the world a promising possibility of reusable and sustainable spaceflight. Seeing that can go up, come out of the smoke, pitch over, go down into the smoke. You could hear all the cheers of all the employees. But for just a minute. The adrenaline was kicking into overtime. No one could see it. It got quiet. It got so quiet. But. And this one guy, just to my right, he said, chest. 
standing! <laughs> there it was. It was sitting, standing tall and proud. Landing the hop. That was so amazing. And you bet there's a reason all these people care. I want to be alive when my grandchildren look at those tapes. Men and women moved, some to tears. Ever since I was a kid, I've been infatuated with the space program and, and, and uh, space exploration. Since I couldn't be part of it, at least I can document it. A village forever changed. Hopefully uh, the design improves and, and it keeps getting better and better. And people starting to believe that the universe just got a little smaller. We took another hop in history. Let's go on to Magic Kingdom. Hold on,